But specifically, we would cite five forces that are prime movers in reshaping the environments in which we operate today. The first of which is the great rebalancing, the rise of China and other developing markets that is fundamentally shifting the locus of economic activity around the world today. The second is what we're calling the productivity imperative, that sustaining prosperity in developed countries will require an unprecedented step change in productivity to offset a shrinking labour force and global talent shortages that we already see. The third is the global grid, global integration that is occurring across capital markets, across trade and across technology. And that will continue to drive market and societal restructuring. The fourth, repricing the planet, that the demand for natural resources is outpacing the supply of those resources, leading to scarcities and the changes that we've seen in commodity prices over recent months, and that will certainly continue and if not accelerate. And finally and importantly, the rise of the market state, that activist states will increasingly compete to secure jobs even at the same time as they struggle to provide for their populations. So five forces, the great rebalancing, the productivity imperative, the global grid, pricing the planet and the market state. These forces are exerting tremendous pressure on all of you, something you well know. Their impact has already been seen. They're affecting the way you recruit talent, they're affecting the way you source raw materials, they're affecting the way you engage with your communities, and they're absolutely affecting the way you interact with your customers. But perhaps one of the more, more important reasons why we're here this morning is because they're also creating a shift in the relationship between business and society. The old status quo has gone. Governments alone are clearly going to struggle to provide adequate solutions. That's what Edward just reminded us. At the same time, employees and consumers and customers increasingly expect business to be transparent and to consider the social and environmental impact of their work. And so the combination of these five global forces, together with the shifting relationship between business and the communities in which we operate, provides in our view a fundamental set of uncertainties that lead us to consider a very different course of action than the one in which we embark today. And there really are two major uncertainties at our work. The level and the consistency of society's expectations of business. And then the flip side of the coin is how you as leaders and business leaders choose to behave, whether or not business chooses to take a leadership role in resolving some of the social problems that are outside of our, of our day to day. And so let's think about what can happen as these different axes start to interact with each other. There is a scenario which is very plausible where governments choose to regulate with little input from business. Corporations are forced to comply because they're just simply unwilling or unable to step up. And we call that a dangerous mismatch. Governments step in, business steps out. The second we would call sustainable value creation, where business does decide to develop voluntary and take action to provide robust standards, collaborate with government, NGOs, and other business leaders. That's a positive outcome, sustainable value creation. The third is perhaps business goes it alone or dual capitalism. We can decide how likely this is, where companies individually choose to address, choose to address social problems and do so at the individual level but without government involvement or action. It's a them and us kind of scenario. And finally, and importantly, there is, of course, the vicious circle, an outcome where business is simply reluctant, chooses not to engage in social and environmental issues, and governments and, uh, governments and NGOs struggle on to find solutions on their own. The vicious circle scenario is, frankly, where we're headed. The majority of people are not in this room. It's a state where business is reluctant to engage on environmental and social issues for all sorts of reasons, some good, some bad, and the issues continue to worsen, Economies need to take action, and government steps in. That's the vicious circle. It's a very plausible scenario, and arguably it's where we're on course to achieve. The second one, sustainable value creation, is achievable, but it does require business to step up. In this scenario, business moves to create new opportunities, purposely addresses social issues, and develops voluntary standards to regulate where regulation is needed. The environmental and the social issues therefore improve, and the economy benefits from a culture of innovation and collaboration. I suspect we're here today because we believe that that is a plausible outcome. But what will it take to accelerate the path to that outcome, as opposed to the vicious circle that we would argue we're currently heading towards? Well, it starts with an assumption, and an economic assumption that we think is reasonable, that it is in the business interest of business to take a proactive approach to engaging on social issues to avoid the negative scenarios that characterise the rest of the options that I didn't elaborate on. But that in turn requires a set of actions, 
and it requires actions at the individual company level. And frankly, if change is going to happen at the scale that's required to avoid the negative outcomes, it absolutely requires collective action on the part of business. It's about collective action, it's about avoiding the negative outcomes, and it's about a positive rationale for business working together.